sorry, guys. I'm mad. I'm heated. I am impassioned. Let's just get into it. <sighs> you know what I hate? I hate when you go to a restaurant, right? And then they're like, all right, I'm gonna seat you in the back. What? Are you kidding me? I am good for business. Put me in the front as advertisement. Because guys, I am very good looking. No? Fine, whatever, I don't even, guys, I'm very good looking. Yes, girl, get it, go me, thank you. Um, I like, I just found out, and so I'm really excited about it, so it's fine if you guys aren't excited with me. And I know, like as women, we're supposed to hate our bodies, but like, look at me, I can't. It's so good. I am the Ferrari of people, park me in the front. Um, I feel like I, um, <laughs> Like, you know, society's always like, you know, you got a shelf life, it's a ticking clock, it's not gonna last. Um, and, and they have these rules for women, you know what I'm talking about? They have their rules for us. They're like, ladies, you gotta keep your shirt on. And uh, it's really just that one that I'm mad at right now. <laughs> um, uh, I sent my first uh, topless photo this week to a group chat. <laughs> It was not unprompted, guys. We would, we like send memes and like news stories to each other. And someone sent this like really dumb looking picture of like this like, like, like male model in Teen Vogue magazine. And uh, he like was shirtless and he had this jacket on his head and a cowboy hat on top of that and the slightest little man boobs and these like pink pert nipples. I was like, oh my God, I have to recreate this. We are torso doppelgangers. And the world needed to know. <laughs> I, um, I have a hard time knowing what's uh, uh, appropriate um, or to do with my like newfound girl, you're super hotness. Um, I think a lot of it is because uh, this time last year, I identified as asexual, and I feel like asexual, I gotta explain what this is. Um, it, it's not really like celibacy or abstinence, those are choices, and asexuality, it's like, oh, sex, no, thank you, my body does not want that. Unsubscribe, hard pass. Um, but like, we still live in this very like sex-driven world, and I like I hate feeling left out. So, um, I, you know, I, and I was like, okay, if you're not gonna participate IRL, the least you can do is have a sex dream. Um, and my my asexual brain wasn't gonna give it to me, you know, wasn't gonna give it to me. Um, <laughs> so I decided I was gonna take matters into my own hands and I was gonna figure out how to lucid dream, you know, when you're in a dream and you can control it. And there are a couple ways that you can do this. You can, um, you can keep a dream journal or you can do like reality checks with yourself. But what I found, what really worked well for me, and you guys feel free to, you can take it, uh, it's, it's a great thing. Um, I found that taking a nice long nap in a hot, car worked wonders. No, you guys get it. It's like a Native American sweat lodge, but way more dangerous. Um, so I'm in it. I'm in my lucid dream and I'm all like, okay, we're going to do it. Excuse me, going up to people like, uh, can I interest you in some physical intimacy? No? Okay. Um, if you, madam, would like to get down, I have just clipped my nails. No, next one. Um, and I was just like going around like, hey, you wanna fuck? And no one in my dream wanted to. I could not make a sex dream happen for myself. Um, you know, I just, like, I couldn't get consent from anyone. And I wasn't trying to be a dream rapist. You know, that's not what the world needs. Um, and whenever people in my real life find out that I was raped, they're always like, oh, really? Oh gosh, are you sure? Gosh, I just, I can't believe that, really? And like, dang, that cuts deep, yo. Like, not a lot gets to me, but I just, I hate it when people don't believe that I went to college. <laughs> Commentary. <clears throat> Um, uh, right now, I live with my college roommates, thank you. Um, and uh, that kind of might give you a little insight into the kind of person I am. Garbage! Um, and uh, my roommate just got a cat, and by that I mean she found a cat. Um, and a reminder, we're irresponsible trash. So uh, I've inherited a lot of the cat having responsibilities. I'm like a cat mentor. and. Um, what that involves is like, you know, cleaning the litter box because I'm the only one in my house bothered by the scent of cat piss. Um, and you know, I've got to like pet the thing and give it loves and sit with it. Give it the, you know, the affection it needs as an animal. Um, and, and that's fine because like I smoke weed, so I'm sitting on the couch anyway. Um, and then I guess somehow it's my job to feed the thing because I'm the only one in the house lactating, but <laughs> whatever. 
Um, uh, Going back to like society and women, we have like a weird way of talking about ladies' bodies, right? Um, when I'm 10 pounds heavier than this, I am what we call a pear. Y'all know about pear-shaped? Um, it's when you like carry all your weight in like your hips and your butt. Um, but you know, I've been working out being a hot girl. Um, and so now I'm quite svelte and I'm a banana. Um, but there are other, other body types for ladies that you get to have. Um, if you carry your weight in the middle, that makes you an apple. Um, but if you've got like tits and shoulders, you're a strawberry. Um, but you know, like when we talk about male bodies, it's always like, Mmm, look at that swimmer's body, or like, oh, check out that dad bod. You know, all of their bodies have careers. <laughs> and we have literal shelf lives. Like, no, like, be with me for a minute, because even, like, the best that you can do as a lady, the ideal physical form, the hourglass, that is still a literal ticking clock. Damn! <laughs> All right, I've been Libby. This has been fun. Thanks, guys. Do a good thing.